As you can see, Paul and I have traveled down to GW Martin today, and I'm gonna speak with Richard Blake, and he's gonna be telling me all about the company and some of the technology they've purchased along their journey. And Paul, you know Richard pretty well, don't you? Yeah, I do. He used to be, uh, he was a managing director of DMG back in the early 2000s when I worked there as an area sales manager. He's a man that very much knows uh, that investing in technology is important. He knows that it doesn't necessarily need to be a milling machine to make a turned part or vice versa. Uh, and while you're talking to him, I'm going to go and explore the machine shop and find out about some of these technologies that they've purchased. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Richard, we're here at GW Martin today. It's a fascinating company. Can you just begin by telling our audience about the company, please? Yes, well, GW Martin has been here for over 50 years. It's a family business. Um, we've been uh, in the precision manufacturing market um, throughout that time, um, through different markets, automotive, defense, hydraulics, filtration. Um, invested quite heavily in technology over the last few years to keep pace with market trends. and. Um, currently doing very well. Mm -hmm. And you've, like you say, you've invested millions of pounds over the years. Just tell us a little bit about some of those technologies, please. So we've invested in some automation. We bought some gantry loaded uh, twin spindle, twin axis machines. Um, these machines really we bought for, for, the, for more automated processes to sort of get, reduce the amount of uh, labor content involved and in labor interference with the parts. So, that's helped us um, in terms of productivity and pre Im certainly improved the productivity of the machines. And these are two of the machines that they were talking about there. These are gantry loaded machines from Mazak, the Multiplex W200Ys. Now this one was the first machine that was purchased about two years ago. And as a result of the success of this installation and the fact that its efficiency is over 95%, so that spindle is in cut that amount of time, they bought the second machine. Now how does it work? Well here you've got blanks. Now these blanks go into the gantry system which or you see the loading system which you see here. They can load this up and then the gantry will pick up the billets and put them into the machine so they can run lights out. Now these machines are two spindles, so there's two spindles on them and two turrets, but they're like two separate machines. Once operation one has been completed on the first spindle, it moves into the second spindle to do op two. The beauty of these machines is they are so, so efficient if you can balance the operations out. So you're getting one half for free. And in terms of the automation, let's try and dispel a myth or two. You know, there's talk of it losing jobs because it's replacing human beings, but that, that's not the case, is it? No, no, we, we've ha we haven't changed our, our employee headcount, as it were, because of that. In fact, we've, we've been going from strength to strength. I think the, the, if you're picking parts up and loading them manually into the machine all day, uh, uh, that can be quite a, a thankless task, to be honest. We can automate that level of, 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 of manual intervention and, and free up time for, for our guys to be able to learn more about the machines, learn, get better skilled, m learn more about the programming, go on training courses. So we, we've got, uh, we see it as, as, as an opportunity to free up time for the guys to improve their skills, improve their capabilities. And some of the other benefits, it's not just about um, not having the human being stood there. You know, you're, you're touching the part less often, more accurate, maybe improved surface finishes, things like this. Absolutely. I mean, years and years ago, I was told that every time you pick a part up, it costs you money. So um, these come off complete in one, and uh, it's probably about the most efficient we can get. And this is a great example of not picking parts up during the process. The only time the component is present here is when it's finished and it's unloaded onto a rotor rack like this from Hydrofeed. And if you look at your other technologies, I know you've got um, predominantly turning centres here, but we're talking slider head lays and various others. Yeah, we've got Citizen and a Star sliding head, two sliding head machines that are... Uh, um, uh, extremely um, competitive in terms of productivity they're producing a lot of parts very quickly and the star is yet another example of gw martin being able to run lights out this machine purchased in the last couple of years this is an sr38 uh, type b 
Now the B means that this machine has a full B axis on it, which means their capabilities for machining complex parts unmanned go beyond that of most other subcontract machine shops. Uh, we've got uh, two ZMZ gantry loader machines with uh, automation. We've got two Mazak multiplex machines with gantry loading for billet work. Um, the CMZs we've got gantry load and bar feeds, so we can, we've got a lot of flexibility. We can bar feed up to 65 mil, uh, and also we can go billets up to 250. So those machines now can, can, can produce automated manufacturing from zero to 250 millimeter diameter. And these are those CMZ machines that Richard talks about. Now, this one was purchased just over a year ago. This is a twin turret, twin spindle machine. Uh, it's got a gantry loading solution on it, as well as a bar feed. Complete automation, but complete flexibility. Now, the reason they bought this one was because this machine was such a success following uh, its installation here three years ago. Now, again, this is a CMZ, this is a gantry loader, this has a bar feed. But this machine only has a single turret, so it's a twin spindle single turret. They advanced to a twin turret with a new one. But I want to talk to you about uh, how the flexibility has affected the company. Now, this particular part here as a component is machine complete on this CMZ machine. You'll see quite a few features, quite a nice component. In fact, this is machine complete in less than 10 minutes. Now, one of the challenges they faced with this part was they didn't want to machine it and then have to outload it on a, on a conveyor. They were concerned about the part being damaged. So with the fact you've got a gantry solution, it means you can machine the part in one operation, in one hit, and you can then unload it using the gantry rather than using the parts catcher. So for small or smaller term parts like that, it was perfect. But in addition to that, you can also see here, this is a finished part that they do here at GW Martin. Very thin walled component, but you'll see the size and the diameter there of the billets. Now these can be fed uh, into the machine. Again, or you can stack the billets up using the loading system. So whether you want a bar feed, long bars, or whether you want to use billets like that, these machines offer the company masses of flexibility. And if we look at the Mazax, what does that offer you? You've, you've mentioned the gantry -led, uh, loaded machines. You've, you've got a, high, a HQR machine as well. Yep. What does that offer the business? Well, I mean, capacity or, or automated capacity, which is you know, we found them to be much more productive. Um, the HQR is, 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 a, is a, a very versatile machine as well. Very stable, rigid machine. Uh, helps us uh, where we've got a slight imbalance in the component. So if we've got more work on one end than the other, we can, the HCO will overcome that because you can use both turrets on one end of the spindle and both turrets on the other end of the spindle. So it, it does, it, it will uh, make a, a very good job in terms of cycle time of, of any type of part really. And this is the HQR machine that Richard was talking about, the Hyper Quadrex. Now this is a twin spindle, twin turret machine with two Y axis. Now the beauty of this machine is you can actually balance turns. So the turrets on this machine can either work uh, both uh, on, together on the sub spindle or the main spindle or independently. What this means is, uh, and with the amount of tools you've got on here, you can really be creative with how you make parts. And you want to be able to do that as an engineer because you want to reduce those cycle times to the absolute minimum. And that's exactly what this HQR machine from Mazak has done for GW Martin. And the business has gone through significant growth of late. If we were to come back in a year, maybe two years time, what are we going to see it's different? I think more of the same. I think we're on a, we've, we, we, we put together a plan of a, 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 over the last few years and we're, we're in the middle of that now. So we've got to continue it, uh, keep investing, keep looking at investing in automation. We think that's the way forward long term uh, and keep investing in our people, making sure we can put enough time and effort into getting their skills, high, high, as highly skilled as we can possibly do.